my ghost on this episode of demons road tv we talk transitioning from a 99 to a one percent club we also talk about people that rock diamonds like 99 diamonds or just diamonds that have words in it whatever it may be and we get into it on this episode the demons road tv no yeah even though it's cold as fuck and we in the crib we ghosting baby Welcome to Demons Row TV, the holy grail of MC culture, where we cover everything motorcycle club involved. I'm Sos the Ghost, I'm your host for the evening, and today we're gonna talk about transitioning from a 99 to a one percenter. The process, the do's and don'ts, the pros and cons, all of that. But the first thing I want you to do is to hit me with that pound ghosting. And that lets me know you're alive and well, sitting on twos, doing what you do, or part of the Demons Road community, just one of my ghosts. Now listen, I'm not going Hollywood. Your boy is not going straight up podcast from here on out. It's just, I stepped out the crib today and it was like one of the coldest. I've never felt that cold just stepping out just to go to the car. So I'm like to stand out in the hood right now and shoot. I wasn't trying to do that, so excuse me for the next couple of weeks. We're going to try to broadcast from the crib. Bear with me. Follow the Sos the Ghost channel. I'm going to be releasing a lot of dope shit in a minute. And cop the Demon's Row clothing. Support that. Much love to everybody that's been supporting. Shout to all my new subscribers. And now let's get into it. I know personally because I started in the 99. I started in the AC. I'm not gonna say names to protect the innocent or to protect whatever, but I started in the 99. I started in the AC first and I transitioned to MC and I rode for years and I learned about the game. And I think that being a 99 before you become a one percenter, it has its pros and cons because you'll learn a lot of stuff that you wouldn't know just jumping into the game, but also when you turn 1%, you're gonna have to turn that switch off and unlearn a lot of things that were not correct or not accurate that you learned when you were 99. So when I transitioned, it was kind of a smoother transition because you already know, and if you haven't seen it before, my episode from a crypt to a one percenter, I started out on a street game banging for a lot of years. So I was already, I was already semi prepared to be a one percenter, like the, the mental toughness that it takes. And once again, I'm saying mental toughness. I'm not saying that if you're in a one percent club, that means that you're committing crimes or you're beating people up or you're shooting or anything. That's all that gangland shit. We're not doing that on this channel, you know, my moral code, if you have watched it, if you're new to the show, we cover everything motorcycle club involved and we do not bash MCs. We don't say names, cases, faces. We don't do none of that. We just talk protocol. We talk what's going on, but I'm not the news. I'm just a regular, you know, we just do a regular show here. It's not about exposing clubs, none of that. There's anything that I have going on, any type of street problems that I have with any club, I'm not airing it out here. This is not for that. This is to uplift the community. Now let's talk about the reasons why people transition. Some people transition because they don't wanna walk around giving everybody a handshake, showing everybody respect. I ain't gonna lie, like one percenters, if you've been to any you know, events, they're not the most social people in the world. They kinda kick it with their own or other one percenters a lot of times. If they know 99s, yeah, they'll kick it with them, but there's some, you know, and it's not everybody, but some people are not the most friendly. And I was like that. When I was in a 99, 
my brother Austin, shout out to my brother Austin. He used to tell me, he used to be like, damn, so you like, you don't even say nothing to nobody. Like you be on your own. And it's like the block I grew up on, on Decatur and 205th in the Gun Hill area of the Bronx, I would know people. They would know my first and last name. I would know their first and last name. And still, we never had one conversation all my life. I mean, we'd walk right past each other, not even acknowledge each other. And and this, that's just how my hood was. It was like the twilight zone. And now growing up and getting older, I'm like, damn, I grew up in some like weird circumstance, you know? But that's just, I don't know, New York is very cold like that. I had that problem of being very antisocial and people that are antisocial, 1% clubs kind of fit them because they get that brotherhood, but they don't really have to like go to a clubhouse or an event and like go shake everybody's hand. You know, 1% of them come to the spot, not say nothing to nobody. So some people like that. Now you have your people that want to transition that are not about that life. And when I say not about that life, it's not in a gangster aspect or being tough. It's in the aspect of actually putting in the work to prospect for a long period of time, to hang around first for a long period of time and really dedicate, like get that phone call at a certain time at night and it's time to go, no excuses, none of that, it's time to go. You know, a lot of people are, are not built for that, but then they put themselves in situations where they join a 1% club and then they get caught up because they're not dedicated. So that's the first thing you wanna do if you're jumping from a 99 to a one, you gotta, you gotta be real with yourself. You gotta say, am I really, am I really about this life? Like, am I really ready to dedicate the time it takes in a 1% club? It's not easy. I'm not gonna sit here and act like it's easy. There's a lot of demand. So I'm not gonna sit here and make it seem like this life is for everybody. You gotta know what you're getting into. Also, jumping from a 99 to a one, do you, maybe a support club is a better look for you? It depends on what kind of club you want to get in. And that's the most important thing. Know what kind of club fits you. Do your homework first. And I always go back to like, you know, it sucks, but you go back to race. You know what I mean? Like, does, is that what matters to you? Like, do you are you a white boy and you want to be around all white boys? Or are you Spanish? You want to be around a whole bunch of Spanish? Do you like the mix? You know what I mean? Like, I, I always find that a mix is a little bit better. But, you know, it depends, you know, it really depends on the club and the situation where you're from. Look at all those factors and also recognize what neighborhood you live in. Don't get don't get into a one percent club that their rivals are in your neighborhood, but you're joining, you know, a club that's in another neighborhood. Like that's not what you want to do. So make the best decision for you. Support clubs are a great way to graduate from that ninety nine to the one because you experience a lot and then it's like a it's like a minor league system for that bigger club so if you know you want to join that club but it's not easy to get into that club because a lot of times getting into a one percent club is very hard to do because you know they don't want to let police and rats and all that in the club so the best thing to do is if you know a certain club you can get with their support and then they'll pick you when you're ready. That'll make your job a lot easier and it'll make it a lot easier on them. They'll know that you're the right pedigree. So just take your time. Never sprint when it comes to anything to do with a 1% club, even a 99. Show them the respect, take your time, fill people out. Cause if you don't know people, you have to put that time in it. You're gonna know after a while what type of people these people are. Are they about what they preach? Going from a 99 to a one, also a problem can be, is if you're too much of a know-it-all. Because you've learned things in your 99, you might think that it applies. If you're a knucklehead, you're gonna try to apply all these things that you heard. So sometimes that's where the negative can be in joining a 1% club and having that experience being a 99, is, is you being a know-it-all. You can't be a know-it-all and you have to understand that you gotta sit back and really understand what's going on before you start speaking. That's why I always stress to all my prospects, don't talk, analyze the room, listen to what's going on, because you might think that something is the right way, but it's not, because you were taught the wrong way, and you were never in that circle, so you don't know. And a lot of people think they know things about the 1% world, nobody's telling you inside shit about their club. I've had people comment before, oh, how do you know this and this about 81 or Mongols or whatever? I don't, 
I speak from my perspective, from my club's perspective, from me, from what I've been through. I can never speak on the next man's story. I only tell my story. That's why sometimes people ask me to talk about certain topics and I don't because I'm not around it or it's not relevant to me or I don't I don't know about it. So I'm not gonna spit anything that's just bullshit. I'm gonna always speak from my own experiences. Now, another topic I wanna get into within the 99.1% realm is somebody posted, I'm gonna post it up here real quick so you can see it. Um, they posted that in the Facebook group and they had a good time, everybody was laughing and everything. But like, I've seen it, I haven't seen it, but I've seen people with diamonds that are not 1% and it can get you hurt. Like realistically, like you should not wear a diamond with something else in it that's not a one if you're not in a 1% club, like earn it. If you wanna walk around with a diamond on your chest, join a 1% club. Put the time in, prospect, join the 1% club. But do not ever put on something that you didn't earn because if you put a diamond on anything, you didn't earn it if it's not a 1% club. I don't care what it is. I don't care if it says 99 and that's how you're establishing your 99. Putting that diamond on it is putting yourself in a 1% category and it will put you in a situation that if you're in the wrong area, the wrong type of brother runs up on you, they're gonna make you cut it off your vest. I've seen it happen before. Some brothers are lenient, some brothers are not. I'm not saying that everybody would do it, but I'm saying you're leaving yourself open to that type of situation. Somebody asked a question about what was the consensus from the 99 when I left. I left on great terms. There was even situations where they were static and I still, I took care of the people in the club. A brother got into a situation, I'm not gonna name any names, and I had to still defend them because that's how I am, I'm loyal, but I just, I wanted to graduate. You know what I mean? Like I wanted to be, I wanted to be in the major leagues. That was a personal decision that I made that I wanted to be in the major leagues and loyalty is everything. And people, there's people that would say that going from a 99 to a one percenter or just going from one club to another club is club hopping. It is not club hopping if you're graduating. If you're moving up, that's not a club hop. If you go lateral, I consider that a club hop. Any questions you may have about transitioning from a 99 to a one percenter, leave it in the comments. Give me a pound 99 or a pound one percent if you're in a 99 or one percent club. Also give me a pound I don't ride or pound lone wolf. Just let me know what the situation is with y'all. If you wanna support the show, you can cop the Demons Row merch. We got a whole bunch of stuff out right now. I'll link that down for you. Listen, also hit the Demons Row at gmail.com send your music for the mixtapes. I wanted to talk about that for one second. I had a, a lot of people, my email is full with so much music and the type of music that people are sending me is not mixtape type of music. So I'm from that era, so I don't know if people know or not and a lot of people I see don't. When you send something for a mixtape, I want it to be more hardcore. It has to be a little bit more hard hitting, more hardcore hip hop stuff. Yeah, demonsrow at gmail.com if you sing because I do need some singers for my project. I got some craziness coming, so y'all do that. Thank you for tuning in to Demons Row TV, the holy grail of MC culture. Like, subscribe, comment, share this on your feed so people can learn. Oh yeah, we ghosting, baby.